Please open with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. And when you have that passage, please open to Matthew, chapter 14. Mark 6, Matthew 14. In the Gospel of Mark, beginning at verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them and walketh upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them, and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. Now that's Mark's account of Jesus coming to them walking on the water. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14. I want to begin reading at verse 22, and let's get Matthew's account of the same experience. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. I love the miracles of Jesus. I love studying the miracles of Jesus. I love teaching the miracles of Jesus. And I love preaching from the miracles of Jesus. It is interesting to note that in every miracle Jesus performed, there were specific lessons for the disciples, for people around them, and for you and me. He never performed a miracle but that there was a lesson 
or more than one lesson for us to learn. The miracle about which I speak today followed one that's very well known to all of us. When Jesus took the lunch of a little boy and fed a multitude of people with the loaves and fishes. And they were so amazed at what they experienced that day that all four gospel writers record that miracle. Right after it was over, the people were so amazed and so enamored of Jesus that they started trying to open an event that would make him king. Jesus did not come to be an earthly king. So he had to stop that. But get the scene now. The miracle of the loaves and fishes is over. The people are aroused with great delight at what they had seen and heard. They wanted Jesus to be their king. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and he said to them, I want you to get in the ship and go across to the other side of the lake. Apparently they did not want to do that because he was not going with them. But the scripture says he constrained them. He insisted that they go by ship to the other side. So now the disciples are getting in the boat and they're taking off to the other side of the lake. But Jesus didn't get in the boat. He sent the people away because he was not there to be made a king. He sent them back to their own homes and he sent his disciples across the Sea of Galilee. But what did he do? He went up into the mountain alone to pray. It's interesting how Jesus loved the mountains. And so do we. My wife especially. Oh, how she loved the mountains. The higher I could get her, the better she liked it. And now she's as high as you can get. But Jesus is up in the mountain praying and the disciples are in a boat going across the Sea of Galilee. Come close now and let's have a look. I've been on the Sea of Galilee many times. It's a beautiful body of water. It isn't very big, 13 miles long at some points, six or eight miles wide. But it's beautiful. And everything in and around the lake is alive. Fish in the lake and growth around the lake, it's just beautiful. And a lot of the ministry of Jesus occurred around the lake of Galilee. If you go south on the Jordan River to the Dead Sea, it's just exactly the opposite. The water is filthy. The sea is dead. There's nothing alive in it and nothing living around it. But the Sea of Galilee is alive. On that sea, they were accustomed to experiencing storms. For the arrangement of the hills around funnels the air down to the water and creates stormy conditions. It is nighttime. In fact, it's three o'clock in the morning. How do we know that it was three o'clock in the morning? Well, the scripture tells us. It says in the fourth hour 
of the night, the storm came. There were four watches during the night from 6 to 9, 9 to 12, 12 to 3, and 3 to 6. This is the fourth hour, fourth watch. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's nighttime. And a storm hits the Sea of Galilee. Have you ever noticed how storms are worse at night than they are in the daytime? Even the storms of life. And the disciples are trying to save the boat. But more than that, they're trying to save their lives. And Jesus is not with them. He's up in the mountains praying. But something happened. The scripture says, Jesus, three o'clock in the morning. Through the darkness saw them rowing and saw the storm. And what did he do? He left the mountain, came down to the shore, and walked on the water and came to their rescue. And he got in a boat. And when he got in the boat, the wind went to sleep. And the waves ceased. And they went safely to the shore. But I see the wheels turning in your mind right now. I can see them and I can feel them. And you say to me, but Brother Carl, Jesus calming a storm on a little lake halfway around the world, what has that got to do with me? I know you're asking that question. And I like you to ask questions like that. I'm real proud of you when you do. Jesus calmed the storm on a lake halfway around the world. What in the world does it have to do with me? I'm glad you asked. Because I said in the beginning, with every miracle that Jesus performed, there is a lesson and sometimes more than one. So what are the lessons that the disciples learned that night and that you and I need to learn today? Move in. Lesson number one. The storms of life do come. Just like those storms gather on the Sea of Galilee even to this day. But the storms of life are also real. Most of us in this room are old enough to understand that. Those of you who aren't yet, you will. The storms of life do come. 
Sometimes the storms of life come unexpectedly. They just happen. And we're in the midst of it before we know it. A call in the middle of the night. A visit to the emergency room. The death of a family member. A doctor's message in the hospital room. A business that fails. A family that's shattered. A child that's gone wrong. Oh yes, they come. This year, I, the Lord willing, will complete 78 years in the ministry. Across those years, as a pastor, I have witnessed many a storm. I have walked with families through terrible nights of agony. I have stood with them in times of great sorrow. They come. And sometimes we pastors can help and sometimes we struggle to find ways to help. But they come. They come in many different forms. But the storms of life are real. And we can let the storms of life do one of two things to us. We can either let them drive us to God. Or we can let them drive us away from God. And I've seen people do both. Maybe you have been through a storm. Maybe you understand more about this than I do. But I've been there. The storms of life do come. Second lesson. Sometimes the storms come when we are trying our best to do the Lord's will in our lives. Two times I read to you today, two times the scripture says, Jesus constrained the disciples to get in that boat. He insisted on it. They didn't want to do it without him. He said, get in the boat and go across the sea. And when that storm came, they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Sometimes the storms come even when you are doing your best to follow God's direction in your life. For we are not exempt from the storms of life. Being a Christian does not make it a bed of roses. Being God's child doesn't mean we won't face the storms. We're not exempt. But how we respond is our witness to the world. Lesson number three. Look at the 48th verse of Mark 14. I want to show you something you need to mark in your Bible. Get the scene now. Jesus is up in the mountains. They're out there in the storm. And look what verse 48 says. And he saw them.
Jesus saw them. He always does. He always knows where you are and what you're going through. And his eye is always on you. He promised to do that. And he does. You remember the song my great-granddaughter sang in this pulpit one year ago? His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You never walk through a difficulty in your life but that the Lord has his eye on you. He's watching. He knows what you're going through. And he cares. He saw them. The Bible says that even a bird doesn't drop to the ground without God seeing it. Aren't you better than the birds? There's another song that says, my heavenly father watches over me. Next lesson. And he came to them. Walking on the waves. Two things. He not only saw them, but he came to them. And he'll come to you. He'll come to you if you just trust him. Whatever you're facing in life, he'll come. Just like he came to them. He came. He came with a message. He said to them, they thought it was a ghost. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. I'm here now. It is I. Yeah. He's there with his people in the hospital room, in the funeral home, in the house. He came to them. Came with a message, fear not, I'm here now. And the last lesson, he got in the boat and still the storm. And the disciples were amazed and they rode peacefully to the shore. We're headed for a shore. It's called heaven. But right now we're walking through the earth like the Sea of Galilee. Sometimes there are storms. But when Jesus comes, we walk through the storm. And he calms it. And with him, we make the shore. Yeah, I love the miracles. And I love this miracle. Because it has something to say to you and me both. Just one warning. 
If you haven't been in one of those storms yet, you will. It's coming. And I hope you will remember these lessons. For when Jesus comes, he turns the darkness to day. And there's peace in your heart. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of learning from the miracles of Jesus. We thank you for the lessons of this one. I pray that you will speak to our hearts in a special way, and if there are those present, who need to make decisions for you, I ask that the Holy Spirit will lead them, that your will may be done in each life. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen.